Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks, where I guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones. Today, what we're going to do is answer a question that I'm getting a lot, which is, what loop should I buy? Now, if you haven't seen the other video on how to choose a loop, then please check it out there. But today, we're going to talk about a couple of the most common loops that I see in the hands of my friends and other colleagues in the trade. But first, before we get into brand names, what I want to say is that the main difference between different loops is not all the newfangled fancy things, it's really down to optics. Most of the loop makers also make things like telescopes and cameras. So you'll hear some very common names like Nikon, you're going to hear Leica, you're going to hear, I don't know if Fujifilm has it, but I expect Fuji does. Because optics, really, when it comes down to it, is very difficult technology to master. So there's very expensive machinery involved, there's also high science, and I don't know what kind of space-age glass they're using, but that's involved too. So the main price point difference between different loops is not just about the name, it's about the quality of the optics in the loop. How well is that lens ground? What kind of material did they use to make the lens? Is there a special coating on it that keeps it from getting scratched? Is there anything else that helps keep light from being distorted, etc., etc.? These are all going to be 10 times triplet loops, as I described in the previous video. They're also going to be aplanatic, which means that they're corrected, so they do not distort the shape of the image. And they're also going to be achromatic, which means they don't distort the colors or cause some sort of like rainbow blur. And again, all of that's in the previous video. I do definitely suggest using a 10 times triplet loop, not one of the higher magnifications for reasons we discussed in the other video, but also because that's what everybody else uses. You want to make sure that you have an idea of what can be standardly seen by other people in the trade. If you have a high-powered microscope, of course you can get up and see all these tiny little inclusions, and that might be fun, but it's not necessarily important for the trade. Knowing what other people can see and what's common to be seen is what's actually important. So anyhow, let's get to it. One of the most common and definitely, without a doubt, the most budget-friendly loop that I have seen is the Bilomo. I believe it's made in Belarus, but a lot of people say that this is one of their favorite loops, especially for the price. Depending on what country you're in, this is going to be about 30 US dollars, I believe. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it on a bunch of different websites, and I'm sure in a number of different shops as well. They come in multiple different magnifications, but I definitely suggest the 10 times triplet loop. The advantages of the Belomo, of course, are that it is cheap, but more importantly than that, it also has a very large lens by comparison with some other loops. Even for the same magnification and the same qualities, some loops will have a larger or smaller window, and the Belomo has a nice big window. So I have friends that are gem cutters that use this every day. As they're cutting their gems, they're always pulling up the handpiece with their Belomo so they can check out the facets, these tiny, tiny little facets that they're polishing and cutting. So advantages, it has a large viewing window, it's cheap, and it has good optics, especially for that price. And it looks cool. Major disadvantages, I honestly haven't heard any, aside from the fact that if you're a gem cutter and you're constantly pulling up the stone to look at it with the loop, if you get too close and you touch the lens, it's going to scratch. The Belomo does not have a scratch-proof coating, to my understanding. Some other loops do have a scratch, well, scratch-resistant, no such thing as scratch-proof. But because a lot of gemstones are made from very hard materials, and this is oftentimes just glass, it scratches very easily. So, Belomo, good call. The next one that is super popular with a lot of people, especially once they're, you know, ready to invest in a little bit better loop, is the Reuben and Sons. The Reuben and Sons loop has a very distinctive hexagonal casing, and it is a bit large, so it's nice to hold in your hand. It's got a nice viewing window, just like with the Belomo. But a lot of people say that the Reuben and Sons has a nice, clear, sharp image, so that's great optics with a large viewing window. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's still somewhere around $60 to $100, depending on which model you choose. The only disadvantage of this one in my mind is the fact that it is large, it's a little bit bulky. So if you're in an office setting, that's great, but if you're out in the field, trying to stuff that in a pocket is obnoxious. And if you've got that hanging from a lanyard around your neck, it's bouncing all over the place like some sort of morning star. Welcome to the medieval times! <laughs> but improvised flail aside, the Reuben and Sons comes highly recommended by a lot of people with decades of experience in the trade. The third and final loop that I'd like to talk about today is the Nikon. It's a plastic shell, which doesn't look so awesome necessarily, but it is a nice matte black finish. But it's very light, it has great optics, and it's very small. So whether you're putting it in your pocket or you've got it in a lanyard around your neck, it's a nice convenient size and shape. And of course, without that extra weight, you don't have that same weaponizing problem. This one is a little bit more expensive at about 100 US dollars. 
made with all the famous Nikon optics, of course, and it is very compact. So that's an advantage and a disadvantage, depending on how you look at it. So with the optics being very nice and sharp, you get a great image, but the problem is because it's compact, the viewing window is smaller than some of the other models that we've talked about. So it really just depends on what you need. Do you need something that's light, that's easy to carry around and not bouncing all over the place? Or do you want something that's got a large viewing window so that you can see more of the stone at the same time? Just depends on the type of work you're doing. There are, of course, many other loops out there on the market, some of which are four times more expensive than the ones that I've talked about here. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's more expensive than that. But really what it comes down to, the major distinction between the different loops that we're talking about is the optics. So you need to get a chance to use the loop in person, try it out, and get a feeling for, is this a sharp image and does it make your eye feel tired? The people that I know that use loops that are in that $400 range are people that are constantly looping stones. They're not using a microscope in an office setting. They're walking around and they're looking at all these different stones to see if they can find any kind of inclusions. What are those inclusions? What information can it give me about the stone? So there you go. We've got a quick review on three different types of loops that might be good for you. You can investigate and decide which one is most suitable for you. As always, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell all your friends about it, and I will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.